March 2017, the RNA and the USGA announced a proposed set of new rules that are due to come into effect in January 2019. Now this triggered a period of feedback and evaluation and as part of this process we're really keen for golfers to get out on the course and try out these new rules. The purpose of this video is to let you see the test rules in action before you get out on the course and give them a go. We start off on the putting green and here there are five principal changes that we're looking for you to test out. Most golfers know that there is no penalty for hitting the flagstick in the hole when you've played your stroke from off the putting green. The proposed new rules extend this option to strokes played from on the green as well. If you want to leave the flagstick in the hole, perhaps to save time or because you think it will help you, there will be no penalty if your ball hits it. If the ball is not told, you will play it as it lies. The proposed new rules allow you to repair almost any damage on the putting green. In addition to ball marks and old hole pugs, you will now be allowed to repair spike marks on any other damage caused by shoes, repair animal damage, and repair damage caused by maintenance practices. The fixing and repair of the putting green must be done promptly and must not improve your line of play beyond the repair of the damage. Under the proposed new rules, when you are assessing the line for your putt, there will be no penalty if your caddy or partner touches the putting green to point out where you should aim or how the putt will break. This includes touching the green with the flagstick. Under the proposed new rules, if you accidentally move your ball or ball marker on the putting green, there will be no penalty. For example, if you accidentally move your ball in making a practice swing or in preparing for your stroke. Drop your ball marker on your ball and move it. Move your ball with your foot. Or cause your ball marker to move. There will be no penalty and you simply replace your ball or ball marker. After you mark, lift and replace your ball on the putting green. If it moves for any reason, including through your own accidental actions or for some other reason such as the wind, you will always replace the ball on its original spot. If you don't know the exact spot, estimate it as accurately as you can and replace the ball there. And certainly three of those changes, being able to repair damage, touch the line of putt and putting with the flagstick in the hole without there being any penalty if you strike the flagstick are things that you can try out on every green when you're playing under the test rules. We are proposing a relaxation to some of the rules when your ball lies in a bunker. Under the proposed new rules, there will no longer be a penalty for moving loose impediments if your ball is in a bunker. However, some of the current restrictions will continue to exist. For example, you will still not be allowed to touch the sand with your club behind or in front of your ball, when making a practice swing, or when making your back swing. So we're retaining this challenge of the shot played from the bunker. You can't ground your club behind the ball, you can't take sand on your backswing, but the good news is you can get rid of these loose impediments. So the stone is out, the leaf can be moved, banana skin goes, great news. The coconut goes as well. The proposed new rules refer to the term penalty area. But for the purposes of the test rules, we're still talking about water hazards. And under the test rules, we've relaxed what you can do when you're playing a ball from within the water hazard. If you find your ball in a penalty area and want to play it from there, 
the same rules will apply as for playing a ball from the fairway or the rough. So before making a stroke, you will be allowed to move loose impediments, make practice swings that touch the ground or any water inside the penalty area, and ground your club near your ball. Searching for a ball is covered under the test rules, and to help with pace of play, we've reduced the time allowed for search for a lost ball from five minutes down to three minutes. And also, if you are looking for your ball, oh, and you happen to move it during search, the good news is there is no penalty now for doing so, but you do need to get the ball back at the spot that you moved it from. We're asking you to test out the new relief procedures. These provide a variety of ways for you to drop the ball and also a different method for measuring out the relief area. The act of dropping your ball under the rules preserves the randomness as to where your ball will end up being played from. The proposed new rules retain this aspect of the game, but allow you to drop the ball in a wide variety of manners, including from shoulder height, as currently allowed, from hip height, or from any other height, including from much closer to the ground, or in any manner, including by tossing it down. The only requirement is that the ball, when dropped, must be held above the ground without it touching anything, and it must fall through the air before coming to rest. You'll be measuring your relief area either with reference to a line or a specific point, and it'll be 20 inches or 80 inches depending on the situation. I have measured 20 inches on my 3 iron, and we suggest that you get one of your clubs and do the same thing. When you take free relief, for example, from an immovable obstruction, you should follow the steps demonstrated by this player. Determine the nearest point where you no longer have interference. Starting at that point, measure or estimate a 20 inch relief area that is not nearer the hole. And then drop your original ball or a substituted ball in that area. Anytime you take relief, your ball, when dropped, must land in and be played from the defined relief area. That is a shocker, that's miles out of bounds. So I've got to proceed under stroke and distance. And under the test rules, what you need to do is drop the ball anywhere within 20 inches of where you played that last shot from, as long as it's not nearer to the hole. And I think I'll only be using my three iron for measuring purposes from now on. When you take lateral relief from a red penalty area under a one-stroke penalty, you should follow the steps demonstrated by this player. Estimate the point on the edge of the penalty area where your ball last crossed. Starting at that point, measure or estimate an 80 inch relief area outside the penalty area that is not near the hole. And then drop your original ball or a substituted ball in that area. The key is for your drop ball to land in and be played from the relief area. When taking relief from a penalty area under penalty of one stroke, one option available is back on a line relief. This player is demonstrating the steps you should follow. Estimate the point on the edge of the penalty area where your ball last crossed into it. Imagine a straight line running from the hole through the estimated point and extending behind the penalty area. Go as far back as you like on this line and measure or estimate a 20 inch wide area on either side of it. And then drop your original ball or a substituted ball in that area. The key is for your drop ball to land in and be played from within the back on a line relief area. One of the key features of the new rules in terms of the relief procedure is that you need to drop your ball in the relief area and play your ball from within that relief area. 
here the ball's on the sprinkler head you would need to establish your nearest point of relief measure your 20 inch relief area drop the ball in that area now you're allowed to drop the ball as we've said from any height but if you can't get the ball to stay at rest within it then you need to try and drop the ball from a lower height in different places to ensure that the ball will come to rest within the relief area and then in this situation your ball would be in play it's unlikely that you'll face this situation when you're using the test rules but there could be a scenario where no matter how hard you try to drop the ball and get it to stay within the relief area it simply won't come to rest in there what you need to do is place the ball in the relief area in that situation and find a spot where the ball will come to rest. When the rules let you lift your ball to take relief, you will be allowed to use either your original ball or a different ball that you substitute. This has always been permitted when taking relief with a penalty, but the proposed new rules will allow you to substitute a ball when taking free relief as well. This player is substituting a ball when taking free relief from a cart path. You can use these test rules in any form of play, match play, stroke play, Stableford, but only in unofficial events, not for handicapping purposes. Also, you might like to try the new form of play where there's a maximum score for a hole in stroke play. Could be quite useful when you've got a 200 yard carry across the ravine. Under this alternative form of play, a maximum number of strokes will be set to cap a player's score on each hole. Example of maximums are net double bogey, two times par, or a fixed number such as six, eight or ten strokes. This means if you pick up your ball without finishing a hole, you will get the maximum score for that hole. No more guys. To help pace of play, you will be encouraged to stop playing a hole when you reach the maximum, or you realise a score of less than the maximum will not be possible. We really appreciate you trying out these test rules and we'd love to receive your feedback through our online survey at rna.org. Thank you so much for being a part of the process of trying to make the new rules as good as they can be for January 2019. To learn more about the proposed changes and to give us your feedback, please visit rna.org.